Hi, we are going to be doing some tiny house quilting today. I'm excited. Tiny House Prepper. Hi, this is Elizabeth uh, with Tiny House Prepper. And I'm thrilled to be able to do another small quilting project here, actually in my own home. I've been doing some quilting with my sister when I see her up in Maine, and she's got this incredible setup. Um, it's really, really nice. But she was able to set me up here in my little tiny living room with what I need to be able to do some quilting here. And so that's what I'm, I'm doing today. I love these. Um, I have been using these for a long time now. My sister made them for me. You can see that the, they have varying... Uh, patterns on the fabric. They're really beautiful. I love purple, especially purple against a dark background. What these are is when you need to put something in the microwave. Oh, you know how what a headache it is when you try to put something in the microwave and then it's hot and you're trying to get it out without dipping a pot holder into the food and it's, you know you end up burning yourself. Well, just pop it in here. This can go right into the microwave and when the food is hot, you just lift it out. And then this can also be used to sit in your lap to protect you from hot food or from really cold food if you're enjoying some ice cream or something. So I have two of these that she made for me, a perfect size <laughs> for these bowls, these glass bowls we use a lot. But I've really wanted to uh, be able to put a larger casserole size bowl or just a larger bowl into the microwave using one of these because it just makes it so much easier. So today, that's what we're making. I'm making one that fits a casserole size. And see, I can put that in there, and when it gets warmed up, you just lift it out. And also, if you've got something that's hot and it's a little larger, you can put this in your lap to protect you from hot or from cold. So this is going to be our project today. Making one of these lovely, washable, reversible microwave bowl protector thingies that you can put in the microwave. <laughs> so come along with me. As we get started, I do want to show you again my uh, tiny house quilting and sewing setup that my sister helped put together for me. <laughs> it's been great. We have our all-purpose desk here. This gets used for everything under the sun um, in our little living room. I have my sewing machine set up here. My sister Dana got me a little ironing pad, and would you look at this iron? Isn't it the cutest thing? I've got it all plugged in because I'm going to be pressing my little pieces here in just a second. And then um, here is a little board I can cut on. A really small cutting wheel here, rotary cutter. My, I've got my pin cushion that I've had for ages. Um, she even gave me a Sharpie, and I will be using that today. And then, of course, several. She gave me several of the different straight edges that you can cut against. Um, she put all of it in this beautiful case she made for me. This is one of my absolute hands down favorite kinds of fabric. It is a soft cotton like this with a real dark background and then little flowers all over it. But you can see she made this for me so that I can put my straight edges. Um, oh, everything just fits in here. It all has a place. I absolutely love this. So I can press, I can iron, I can cut, um, and it, it works, to, especially to do smaller projects. Just right here at my own desk, right in my little tiny living room. So I love it. Isn't this pretty? I got it on really good sale at Joann's, and it's really great for putting everything in that I need. All right, I have already cut my pieces of fabric that I'm going to need to use. I will show them to you right here. I'm going to have one side of my uh, little protector bowl be this fabric, and I'm going to have the other side um, be this fabric. I think that's going to really be pretty. And as you can see, it goes with the other ones I already have because of the whole wonderful purple thing. Now, um, I've already got the batting cut also. I'll tell you the dimensions that I'm using here. I wanted to talk about the batting for just a moment. I've gone ahead and cut a square here. I'm going to be showing you how to sew one. Um, I actually cut to make two, but I'll just show you sewing on one, but I do have two pieces cut here. Because this is going in the microwave, I have been very careful to use a natural batting. This is actually the kind that I got. Um, just found it at Walmart. 
and um, I want to use a real natural cotton batting um, because it's going to go in the microwave and occasionally when people have had some of the synthetic battings or something that has little fibers in it um, they have overheated occasionally in a microwave we don't want that to happen now I have been using my little microwave bowl protectors for ages with no problem um, the ones that that I made with my that my sister made for me, which I'm going to do want to show you here, they have natural batting in them, and of course they're only in the microwave long enough just to warm something up. Um, you don't want to do any long-term cooking in there, and also um, if something spills over or splashes over, especially if it's fatty or something like that in food, um, be be aware of it. Um, but like I said, I've never had any problems. They have been very useful, and they also have washed very easily. So I don't have any qualms at all, especially with using a natural batting like this. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is take just a moment and press my um, fabric here. It's just always a good idea, and I'll put this one aside because I'm going to be sewing that a little bit later. It's always a good idea to press your fabric um, before you get started. It just makes it nice and smooth and flat. Um, I've tried to be very careful as I'm cutting to get my dimensions correct. But if this isn't the cutest thing, and it really does a good job, I've got it plugged in. Put it on my special ironing mat here. <laughs> when I put this up today, I hadn't used it in a while, and I was trying to think which side it's supposed to be on. I'm sure I'm going to get comments if it's on the wrong side. But it'll work either way. This is very protective right here. I kind of feel like this should be what I would iron on. What do you think, hon? <laughs> I think it's the other way around. Okay, maybe I better turn it over. I'm gonna end up calling my sister. Oh, I'm just, I'm, this is all learning. Okay, well anyway, here we go. Now, you know, it must be the right side up because they wouldn't have made it so pretty if it was supposed to be the, the part on the bottom. You notice I did check on it before I started ironing. <laughs> okay, oh yeah, we're just gonna give this a nice pressing. I can feel the heat pouring off this little iron. And of course, this is a, a new piece of uh, fabric from a you know bolt, so the, it's got some places in it that are really definitely got some a little bit stubborn seams in it. But anyway, I'm going to be ironing both of these pieces. Don't need to iron the batting, and um, I'll be right back. All right, I am all done ironing, and um, with this little teeny iron, of course, you unplug it just as soon as you're done. You don't want to leave it on. I've got it on a really strong extension cord down here. And uh, there we go. And I'll plug it back in when I need it again. <laughs> it works really well. All right, now let me talk to you just a little bit about the steps that we're going to be taking on this project. One of the first things that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting some lines on my bat batting. It's not going to matter um, that the lines will be on there permanently because it's going to be on the inside and I think that I'm going to use a pen rather than a sharpie for this see how it works here a bit what we want to do is we want to do two diagonals this way and then bisect it this way all right so first thing I want to do is this is actually just about exactly in half there we go. All right. I'm going to go ahead and mark this on both ends. Um, I don't have a, um, and you know what? My 12 inch ruler will work. It's going to be the 13 inch. Oh, that reminds me. Yes. <laughs> Let me tell you this. Thanks for bearing with me. Um, if you want to make one that's the size of the smaller ones I showed you, your batting piece for the inside needs to be nine by nine and then you're going to need a front and back you're going to um okay a front and back piece um, is going to be ten by ten the uh, fabric for the outside must be one inch bigger you're going to need two batting pieces for each one and then you're going to need a front and a back so for the small ones the batting is nine and the larger uh, front and back is ten for this one, because I wouldn't, I'm going to make this one more of a casserole size, and um, this wasn't actually on the original pattern, but my sister and I thought about it and figured it out, and I made these for my daughter-in-law for Christmas, and they worked out really well. 
I'm making this with the batting 12 inches and my fabric on the outside 13 inches. So two pieces of batting 12 inches and a front piece 13 inches and a back piece 13 inches. Well, it's not really a front and back because it's totally reversible. Okay, I'm glad I explained that. Now that does mean that I can use a regular ruler because this isn't quite 12 inches. It's a, a little one. I can use a regular ruler and go ahead and start putting in my lines here. There we go. And now I'll just mark this at, at um, six inches. Okay. So we go this way. Now on my sister's big setup that she has on her table, goodness, you can, she has things that you can use to measure, you know, 28 inches or something, but I'm doing fine with this. There we go. It's still a very good tiny house project. Now, since I have this made, making the traverses is going to be quite easy. Here we go. So what we're going to have is a piece of batting for each of the um, patterned fabrics that we have. I'm just doing it this way because this is, of course, being a diagonal is going to be a little more than 12 inches. So Here we go, a little Pythagorean theorem thing going on here. Okay, so I'll show you what this looks like when it's done, and then I'll be doing the second one, and uh, I'll show you where we go from there. There we are. Okay, now that's what it's going to look like. I'll fill this in just a little. Okay. So is, yeah. that, is that work there okay with the supervisor? With, oh, with my supervisor over the here? Supervisor, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's been he's been supervising and really hoping, I'm sure, that I somehow dangle that um, measuring tape in front of him again. <laughs> oh, that was so funny. <laughs> I have the tape measure back, please. Oh, he's holding it in his paws. <laughs> you goofy thing. Yeah, come on, I need to put, <laughs> I need to put it away. Oh, okay. whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, don't you want it? Don't you want it? <laughs> oh, he's got strong paws. All right, now listen, I really do need it, sweetie. <laughs> It's oh, it's okay. Yeah, you're so careful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, both of my batting pieces have the pattern drawn on them. Now let me show you what we need to do on each of these long sides here. Not the vertices, but along the, the side. We are going to come on either side of this line one inch and then we are going to go up and I like to start it on a real solid line there so we've got one, two and a half. I'm going to go up two and a half inches and mark that. So and this is all done of course on the batting. Now, here we go. Okay, now I do this on both pieces of batting on all four sides. I'll be right back. Now, if you look, I have this pattern now on both pieces of the batting. Okay, now let me take one of my fabric pieces and I am going to place my batting with the back side, you know, the, the uh, good side down. In other words, we're going to put, you know, the batting on the side that doesn't have a real pretty big pattern on it, obviously. And place this on here just about as square on there as I can. The um, batting is going to be smaller than the fabric. Looks like I 
Got a little short of my fabric on one side. That's going to be all right. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch the batting onto my fabric um, on these lines, not this yet. Okay. Bring it over and... foot pedal handy there. I'm going to bring the needle down so it doesn't go, dis my thread doesn't go disappearing. And here we go. And there we go. Okay. So I'm just going to follow. And stitching the batting onto back side of the fabric. Okay. Now, I will go ahead and do that on all... There we go. My sister also included these exquisite little thread clipping scissors in my little setup that she made from, got for me. I love these. They're so pretty. I'm a real sucker for pretty things. I just got this water bottle because it's metal. It's stainless steel, which is better than drinking out of plastic. And that's from Pioneer Woman. Um, Re, uh, oh my goodness, what's her last name? But Pioneer Woman. Isn't that pretty too? Anyway, <clears throat> it's my water. All right. All right, I will go ahead and follow. I've done this one, and now I'm going to follow here and here and here using both the pieces of backing, I mean, both the pieces of fabric, and both of the pieces of batting. Now, this is stitched here, 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 and here. Um, I, if you look, you can see that it's really nice. It forms a beautiful cross right there. And it's really easy to have that come out really nice as long as you just kind of follow your lines. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and sew the darts. And you're going to take where we marked the two, the inch, and the inch, and then up two and a half inches. You're going to go ahead and fold it over. And I have discovered for myself that I much prefer sewing from the outside to the point. And on all of these stitches, I am back stitching, um, you know, a little bit with each of them. I want them to be really good and strong. So now I have this over in my machine. And going to go ahead and run right down this little seam right here. Okay, and <laughs> my thread pulled out of it. Okay, here. Try it again. Now I'm going to start this. Oh, no, I like doing it this way. I'm going to start it right here and sew this, drop my needle in so my thread doesn't just pull out, and I'm going to just follow that line, little back stitching here, right down to the corner. Okay, now what this does is this forms a very nice dart right here. I'm going to get this. It snipped off. I always have a little container that I put all of my threads in so that I don't have them all over the place. There we go. <laughs> all right. Now I'm going to do that with all four of these on both pieces. I'm going to sew the dart on all four of them. And the, the, after I get that sewn, let me show you the next thing I'm going to do. Come around over here. In order to keep this from being way too bulky when we flip it around and sew it all together, I'm going to go ahead and I like to do it like this. I'm leaving myself like a good quarter inch here. I just need to trim this. There we go. Oh, I'll get that off a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Great. Usually it's nice and neat. That won't matter. It's all going to be inside anyway. Anyway, um, and this goes up in my little scrap bowl. 
That way, when we flip it back around again, it's not going to be so bulky. But you notice, I left myself a nice, good quarter inch there. And um, so we'll have a nice, strong seam there. I'll finish the rest of these, and we'll go from there. I'm going to be doing this, the same thing, on both of the fabric and um, batting pieces. I'll be right back. I just finished doing my uh, darts and trimming them. So if you look here, as I flip this around, I now can kind of see the area that I'm going to have to set a nice big bowl in this to use in the microwave. It's coming out very nice. I'm done now with my little uh, small wonderful quilting set from my sister. It's all going to slip back into its own spots in here. Love it. Let me slip you in and close it up. <laughs> that is the cutest thing. All right, now I have done both of these. Now they're completely at the same point. What I want to do now is I want to put both right sides together and I am going to stitch them together. I'm going to leave an opening so that I can flip them back out again right side out but um, I'll leave a space you know probably about this big. Um, believe me you need the room but um, it's not going to be an issue to have a space like that because this entire thing is going to be top stitched all the way around so it will be a very nice neat finish. One of the things I really want to do here is line up these darts um, that I have done. Line them up really nice and carefully here and I'm going to pin them because I want to make sure that I get those lined up and I'm going to go and get each of these. I want these seams to very definitely line up with each other. So I'm kind of carefully lining up the um, the batting inside. Now this has been trimmed. It's not going to need to be ironed at this point. There's just a very small little amount um, sticking up here. So it'll be fine even if I don't iron it in terms of sewing them together. You have to kind of just work them together here. There we go. I want those seams to meet. Take it out of my tomato pin cushion over here. <laughs> my tomato pin cushion. And the little strawberry sharpens needles. I've had that forever. <laughs> my mom used to have one like that. She did a lot of sewing. Okay. Oops, that's... You have to just kind of work them together, and they will. They'll come together. All right. Now I know I'm going to have these very nicely together. All right. Now I'm going to start stitching around, and I'm going to just, you know, bring this up pretty close to right on the edge of the batting. And... I'm just going to start and run all the way around, and like I said, I will leave an opening, but it'll be between the corner and the um, darting, the dart area here, to turn it right side out. I don't want to have to be fussing with um, these corners. They need to be very strong and reinforced. Okay, so we're just going to work our way around, and as usual with sewing projects, I got a feeling my bobbin thread's going to be gone pretty soon. That's just part of life, dealing with bobbins. Okay, and I'm going to try to line these seams up pretty well here. Now, I don't want to sew the batting at this point because I want that to stay inside. It's going to make it too bulky if I try to combine that into the seam. Okay, needle down. Let's just start our way around. A nice back stitch. Here we go. Now I'm going to slow down a little bit here because I'm going to have this pin coming up and I want to make sure I know where it is. There it is. Okay. Good. I'm going to take the pin out. It's right here. Don't poke myself. <laughs> here we go. 
Uh, that was my own fault. Put the needle in, raise this up, and now I can easily get to the pin. I should have been sewing the other way. I'm going to move the other pins, I think, before I continue. <laughs> there we go. I got it. Well, you know, things don't always go perfect. There we are. But I am going to make sure that I have got these two lined up very nicely. And I do. Okay, drop it down again. There we go. Make sure these are lined up, which they are. They're looking great. At this point, I can stop right there, keep my needle down. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and move this to the top. Oh, I started it on the wrong side. There we go. Now yeah, it'll be a whole lot easier to get out. Okay, now I'm turning the corner. My needle is still holding everything in place, and here we go again. Alrighty, so I will be working my way all the way around, and notice I'm not sewing the batting into it. Okay, all right, I'll be back. I will sew all the way around and leave an opening to turn it the other way around. Okay, I have finished sewing all around the outside edge, leaving an opening to turn it right sides out. I also just um, put my iron back on again because I unplug it. You have to unplug it when you're not using that cute little iron so that I'm ready to do one more ironing job. So at this point then, you find your opening, and you just hang in there, <laughs> and just keep working it, and you will get it to turn right sides out. There we go. Oh, that was an easy one. Okay, now let me go ahead and find my corners and push them out. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, this. I love these fabrics. This is really going to be so pretty. Okay, that's going to need a touch of attention. Not a problem. Because I'll be top stitching this whole outside edge. Alrighty, now. Here we go. Smooth it in. And I'm going to press it. And get these the little pouch like nicely pressed and actually I'm gonna go ahead and do it this way yeah makes it a little easier now how many people can do that sitting down and move their whole ironing board over <laughs> that's pretty cool all right let's get my yeah thank you hun let's get my edges pooched out nicely and I'm just gonna press each little quarter down get my edges all nicely out I think this must be um, lavender flowers in this I love the smell of lavender there we go so see I'm just ironing the whole thing I'm gonna do that last one last week that um, the one that's not sewn last so I can be real careful how I do the edges on that there we go now this one obviously we're going to be turning under and top stitching the whole edge here and I'm gonna have this turned under and I will get that pressed and pinned and that way I can make a nice seam right there also there we go now these are completely reversible so the other side can be the outside just as easily um, or the inside. They're totally reversible and so far every the ones I've had have been wonderfully washable. Okay, good. Gives you an idea what the bowl is going to look like. All right. Yeah. I ended up with a bow kind of right in the center. It's kind of nice. <laughs> Isn't that nice? There we go. Okay, now I'm going to move my ironing board back over and I'll be getting my iron up un unplugged. I don't need it anymore. Okay, I'm going to get this little side all pinned up and stitch it and we will be done. I'll show you the last top stitching step. 
All right, now I am going to simply go all the way around my edge with about a quarter of an inch nice top stitch. It'll really reinforce it. It'll hold together those areas that have been, um, you know, were not, not sewn quite yet so I could get it turned the other way, turned it around. So let's just run around this whole thing. Now this is a top stitching, so I am not going to back stitch. I'm just going to start and go. Just right on the edge. Okay, I'm going to continue going, and I'll show you the last little bit when I'm putting the trickier parts together. Now I'm coming up to where I'm going to be putting together the opening. This is very thick right here, so I'm going to go very slowly. I don't want to break my needle. I'm just going to take my time. Okay, now I'll put the needle down, and I'm going to lift it up. And bring around this corner. Now I've got this pin, but now I'll be able to just hold it down with my hands nice and firm so I get a really lovely seamless, I mean it's a seam, <laughs> but I mean you won't be able to tell where the opening was. Okay, here we go. Oh, it helps if you put the foot down. There we go. Tuck it in. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to check that corner. Oh, it looks beautiful. <laughs> Excellent. All right, now, I am going to go back around then and come right up to where I started the seam. And then I'll show you the finished product. Easy does it on these big, thick ones. Easy, 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 easy. Okay. place where I start is so it'll look nice and smooth. Now, slow, slow, slow. I'm going to stop right there. That's it. Whew. Oh, I'm so thrilled my bobbin thread held out. I don't mind changing bobbins, but it's really nice when you have enough thread in there to do a whole project. That's great. Okay. All righty. If we can come back around, look at that. Now I'm inspecting to make sure that I've caught everything. You know, I'm looking things over to make sure that that opening was came together very smoothly. Oh, I'm so thrilled. Now, here is the bowl. It can also go this way if I want it to and this should easily hold um, larger bowls casserole dishes things like that where you want to warm something up in your microwave and then if you need to put something in your lap um, to protect you from the cold or the heat um, these work so so well all right and it's going to be nice because I've got my littler ones here See, these are the ones that hold individual bowl size. And oh, they have been used and used and used. I think they look like a flower when I do them like that. And those will just set inside. This kind of a project is wonderful for me living in a really small little house because I don't have room to put a lot of things. But this is very practical. I will make a lot of use of it. And it's a fun project. And I will be able to use this... Um, in my kitchen without taking up too much room. I'll just put it with the other ones. And there we go. A lovely protector to put things in for your microwave. All right, thank you for joining me today. This has been a really fun quilting project. Once again, thanks to my sister for everything I'm learning from her and for her generosity in setting me up so well. Be blessed. And it's been fun sharing this with you. All righty. If you like the video, um, you know, please subscribe and the likes do help us a lot. And I would be thrilled to see you again soon. Okay. <laughs> I have the tape measure back, please. Oh, he's holding it in his paws. <laughs> you goofy thing. Come on, I need to put it away. Oh, okay.
Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, don't chew on it. Don't chew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>